The cities and towns all across Connecticut are doing everything they can to try to protect their people and their citizens. Unfortunately, at this point, how well a city is faring really depends on just how close it is to that epicenter of the outbreak in New York City. And Danbury, being in Fairfield County, is getting hit hard. So we're happy to have Danbury Mayor Mark Bouton joining us now. Uh, Mayor Bouton, thank you. This is uh, something we've been trying to do around this time every morning. It's the first chance we've gotten to talk to you since this all started. Uh, it looks like uh, over 750. 50 cases and almost 50 people just in your city have died. Those are awful numbers. Uh, how is the city coping and how are you coping? Yeah, um, it's been a you know difficult time for everybody uh, out there. Um, right now, our, our latest numbers are, are just over a thousand uh, people that are COVID positive uh, cases that we have in Danbury, and as you mentioned, about 50 people that have lost their lives. So, um, this is something that uh, you know we we definitely were prepared, um, we're ready, but it still it always hits you uh, in a way that you never thought it would. And you know, we certainly our hearts go out to those families that are dealing with this tragedy right now. Um, so we're out working hard every day. We're trying to get the word out for people to follow the guidance that's been put out there by the state of Connecticut, by the city of Danbury, by the federal government, the social distancing stuff, the mitigation efforts that we're putting out there, because they are working, right? We, we have bent the curve a little bit. We flattened it just a little bit. It's not been as steep as it was anticipated. Uh, but uh, this is a serious situation. It's a very highly contagious, very, very serious uh, illness that if you get it, um, you know, we, you, you don't want to end up in the hospital. Yeah, and that's the thing. Hospital capacity, a huge factor in determining how many people are going to die here. So we got the uh, the overflow hospital set up at the O'Neill Center at Westcon, and then uh, the field hospital set up outside of Danbury Hospital. Uh, how are those doing? What is the saturation like there? Just how close are those places to being filled as far as you know? Yeah, we've, um, Danbury Hospital, is obviously our strategic partner here, and they've been just outstanding. Um, they uh, are close to full. Um, they're, they're busy. Um, there are some patients that are going to be moved through the O'Neill Center shortly. Uh, they've just received the certification on fr uh, last Friday to, to be able to hold uh, patients. So uh, you'll see that be ramped up a little bit more to provide some spacing for patients um, that are using Danbury Hospital as well as the mobile field hospital that's just outside of the building. All those facilities will be in use at one point or another during the next couple of weeks uh, as we deal with the surge that's been going through uh, the hospital. The surge has been late showing up, but it's it's. I think here um, we're you know increasing every day about 60 to 70 uh, COVID positive cases. So we're working hard, and um, the staff has just been absolutely outstanding, uh, and you know really being our heroes and, and taking care of us. Yeah, and let's hope this is the worst of it. Uh, one thing we're really starting to understand the importance of is clear, consistent, accurate communication, lines of communication being open, and good information. Communication is something you've always been very good with. Of course, you're very accessible on Twitter. Uh, what else are you doing just to try to keep everybody in the loop or to make yourself accessible to people who have concerns? Sure. Uh, you know, li we do something called Live at Five. That's uh, every day, Monday through Thursday, on Facebook. And that gives uh, about 15 to 20 minutes for people to ask questions. Uh, you know, we brief uh, our residents on where we are in terms of uh, co the COVID-19 uh, crisis, and we kind of give people information that they need to know going forward for the day and for the week. And uh, it's been very successful. It gets a ton of views, thousands upon thousands of people. In fact, uh, one of our local cable access has taken that and now has put it up on, on TV in the evening so people can get updated there. And um, we're also using our reverse 911 system for outcalling to update uh, some of our shut-in and our elderly residents, uh, as well as um, all their kinds of social media, everything from Snapchat to Instagram, you name it, uh, I'm on it. But it's been a, uh, an interesting process because people communicate differently than they did, say, even 10 or 15 years ago. So we got to make sure that we're, we're in the right channels for people to hear us and to understand what we're saying and what we mean um, when we put out guidance for people to follow. Uh, lastly, just got a little bit more time. Want to make sure we mention the Make Some Noise Danbury initiative happening this weekend. What's that all about? Yeah, we just, you know, I think people, there's a lot of pent-up um, 
uh, it's hard to enthusiasm in a way uh, to say thank you to uh, our essential workers. And that could be anybody from our doctors and nurses and physicians assistants to uh, the delivery people, the grocery people that are still working in the stores to our public safety uh, uh, component as well as our public works crews, just the entire community that's still out there working. And so as a way for this community to say thank you, we're asking churches, uh, synagogues, um, all kinds of organizations, people go out on the front lawns to ring their bells, to make noise, you know, hit their horns on their cars from 7 to 7.05 p.m. Uh, it's just a way to say, hey, thank you. We know you're out there for us, and we, and we just so appreciate it. So we're really rallying the community behind that, and um, we're going to try to make a whole lot of noise here in western Connecticut, and maybe you can hear us up there, too. Here's hoping. It's the kind of thing that also makes people feel connected again, outside of just showing the gratitude. Mayor Bowden, uh, hopefully we can check in with you again sometime next week. Thank you so much for taking the time. Uh, stay safe down there. Absolutely. Take care, Tim.